On Friday, the Republican National Committee and the Trump presidential campaign announced their plan to organize more than 100,000 election integrity volunteers and lawyers in battleground states during the upcoming 2024 presidential election. The plan includes placing representatives both at voting sites as well as the ballot counting centers along with an election integrity hotline for lawyers to field questions from those monitoring the on-site locations. Joining me now to discuss this is Christina Bob. She's the Senior Counsel for Election Integrity at the Republican National Committee. Christina, welcome to Washington Watch. Hey, Joseph, thanks for having me. Where do you see the most significant threats to conducting an election in 2024 that the public can have confidence in? Well, I think uh, mail-in ballots certainly are a, a big concern as far as the chain of custody and, and keeping track of them. So uh, the biggest concern is just making sure that people on the ground, people in these communities are involved, paying attention, make sure you know what's going on in your counties. And I think if we have enough people with eyes on and part of the process, we can have a secure election. And I want to talk specifically about what these 100,000 election integrity workers, and that's an ambitious goal, across the U.S. will be doing, because you mentioned there specifically <laughs> the chain of custody concerns associated with mail-in ballots. How will these volunteers help ensure that the mail-in ballot process is trustworthy? Well, it's being part of the process, right? It's being on the ground in these counties. And there's a number of things that these volunteers and workers can do before the election and then things that need to occur during the election. There's a lot of really great grassroots currently working to um, contact county officials and ask them, you know, what are you doing to secure them? Let the county officials know that you're paying attention and uh, you want to hold them accountable to make sure that they're following the law and just checking in on that. And then, of course, here at the RNC, making sure that we're training workers, training people to understand what the law is, what they can and can't do, um, being part of that process as far as watching when the ballots come in, where there's allowed to be observers when they come in and they can see the actual chain of custody and the process all the way through. It's really important to have people with eyes on who can report problems as they arise so we can deal with it then and not have to deal with it after the fact. Do you expect that there will also be Democrat volunteers and lawyers essentially performing the same role on their side? I hope so. I certainly hope both sides want election integrity. Uh, you know, from 2020, we saw that there certainly was no shortage of Democrats that had opinions and had uh, positions on the way things needed to be conducted in 2020. The concern for us was that Republicans were largely excluded. We saw Republicans kicked out. We saw uh, pizza boxes and cardboard boxes being put up on the windows so people couldn't see into what was going on. Recently, we had to file two complaints with the Wisconsin Election Commission um, due to Madison and Milwaukee not hiring enough Republican workers, even though the Republican Party had submitted more than 250 names uh, of people who had confirmed that they were willing to work the election, and they called less than 50 of them in order to actually be part of the process. So, uh, yes, I think there will be Democrats, and, and we need them. There ha we need representation from both sides. But the problem that we have seen is that they've been excluding Republicans in a lot of these key places. A lot of the ballot counting happens at the local level in county offices generally. Do you perceive general openness to this kind of the, the level of transparency that you're looking for and accountability and kind of oversight? Or are the people doing the ballot counting kind of hostile to what you're proposing? <laughs> Well, hopefully this time around they will not be hostile, although we certainly saw some of that in 2020. There was a lot of disputes about what was going on because we could not see into um, what was taking place. So I, I am happy with the precinct counting, where we see the counties that count at the precinct level. That in and of itself is a form of election security because it's decentralized. You have all of the counting taking place at these various precincts, which when you have different precincts doing the counting, that is a level of security because it's decentralized. But when we see these big uh, voting centers where everything is centralized counting, that's where it becomes a lot murkier and it's harder to see because you have a couple people doing counting in a back room that count for the entire county. And it's much easier to cheat when it's all centralized. Uh, so us good conservatives like to decentralize command and control in order to make sure that uh, there are security measures in place. So it's 
it's these big centralized county facilities like we saw in 2020 at the State Farm Arena in Fulton County and in Milwaukee and in Philadelphia when in Detroit, the TCF Center, where we had the biggest concerns. So personally, my biggest concern or where I'm kind of you know, paying a little extra attention is to the big centralized vote counting facilities yeah. uh, that are, are centralized. Christina, we've got about a minute left. There's been a lot of concern about election integrity on the right. Do you have a sense for how many voters have, uh, have become disinclined to participate simply because they don't trust the process? And do you have reason to believe that this effort will uh, enhance confidence in the process and therefore participation? Well, I hope it does It does that. I hope it enhances participation because we need everybody to vote. 2024 is a pivotal election and we need everyone to vote. If you have concerns and are worried about it, the best thing you can do is to get involved in the process. I'm fortunate to work with people across the country, a lot of grassroots efforts. And I can tell you the people that are involved and engaged on the ground are not discouraged. They're very in encouraged uh, by the amount of enthusiasm and people involved that are uh, concerned about this and working to protect their local election. So if you're one of these folks that say, oh, I don't know if I can trust my vote, I don't know if I should vote, get involved. You're exactly the kind of person that we need to get involved in the process to be part of the solution, and it will encourage you because yeah. uh, courage is contagious, and right. these grassroots efforts have been fantastic, and I'm honored to work with Christina, the folks on the ground. very quickly, tell people how they can. Is there a website? Please. Yep, please go to protectthevote.com, sign up. That's the RNC's website, protectthevote.com, and we'll get you plugged in. Christina Bob, thanks for your time. Thank you.